Listen, everyone knows Jaden Animations is something of a Pokemon master. She's done countless Nuzlocks, a Soul Link, she even beat Pokemon XD. But there's one Pokemon realm that Jaden has only just dipped her toes into, competitive Pokemon. Now, about a year ago, Jaden asked me to help her get acquainted with competitive Pokemon, and I did. I built her a team using her favorites, and with some coaching, she piloted it to the highest rank on the in-game ladder, Master Ball tier. Here's the thing though, when I taught Jaden last time, the game was different, like really different. So when Jaden asked me to help her become a top trainer in Scarlet and Violet, I knew I had some work to do. The first step was to build her a team. Obviously, I wanted Jaden to actually have fun when she was playing, so I wanted to use only her favorite Pokemon. The last time, that meant using only Pokemon that were in her B tier or above, but this time I wanted to go even further. I decided I was only going to use Pokemon that Jaden felt were A or S tier. Everything else wasn't going to cut it. So I got to work. The first Pokemon I decided on was Skeleturge. It's a really strong Pokemon right now, and it's in her S tier. Skeleturge's goal is to be extremely bulky and really hard to get off the field, and while it's sitting there, to get up one or two Torch Songs. Torch Song boosts the special attack of Skeleturge every single time it connects, so after one or two, it's putting out a ton of damage. I trained Jaden Skeleturge to be super bulky and gave it a leftovers to help it stay alive. Protect and Slack Off would also give it staying power, but for its last move, I decided to go with Terra Blast. Two of Skeleturge's most common counters are Hydreigon and Garchomp, and with Terra Fairy and Terra Blast, Skeleturge can flip these negative matchups on their head. Next, I chose Meow Skirata. On its own, it's already a great Pokemon, but it also happens to pair really nicely with Skeleturge. Meow Skirata threatens the ground, water, rock, and ghost type Pokemon that are normally used to check Skeleturge. I decided to go with the most standard Meow Skirata set, which in my opinion is also the most flexible. I maxed out its speed and attack investment and gave it the item Focus Sash. The main idea behind Meow Skirata is that it's just a really good flexible Pokemon that is almost always going to contribute when you bring it to a battle. I wanted a way to influence the speed of the battle next, so I added Hydreigon. It's one of the most popular Pokemon right now, and with access to the move Tailwind, it can both output a ton of damage and support its team. I rounded out his move pool with Protect, Draco Meteor, and Dark Pulse, and gave it a Life Orb for offense and Terra Steel for more defense. Now, with both Meow Skirata and Hydreigon, posing fairy Pokemon were starting to look really threatening, especially Sylveon. Because Sylveon is so especially bulky and poison types kind of suck, I knew I wanted a physical steel type attacker. Now, when you're thinking about physical steel type attackers right now, there is one Pokemon that clearly stands above the rest, and luckily for me, Jaden thought it was in the A tier. King Gambit. This is one of the absolute strongest new Pokemon, so I was really excited to use it. I went with the standard moveset of Protect, Kowtow Cleave, Iron Head, and Sucker Punch, and gave it a Citrus Berry to help it stay alive longer. Because King Gambit is already so offensive, I wanted to use a defensive Terra type, like Flying. This lets it become immune to ground type attacks and resist fighting type attacks, which are two of King Gambit's three weaknesses. Lastly, even though Supreme Overlord is a really cool signature ability, I don't think it's as consistent as Defiant, so I went with that. Now at this point, I realized that the team had three dark types, which means three fighting weaknesses. The best defensive type if you're worried about fighting type attacks is obviously Ghost, and luckily for me, Jaden happens to like my new favorite Ghost type Pokemon, Annihilate. Annihilate has a couple different movesets that it can run, but I personally really like the Choice Scarf one. With Choice Scarf, Annihilate outspeeds like nearly every Pokemon in the game. And with Final Gambit and Max HP investment, it can immediately trade all of its health for a KO on a threatening opponent. I rounded out his moveset with U-Turn, Close Combat, and Rage Fist, but to be honest, I figured that most of the time, Jaden would probably just be clicking Final Gambit. So we have five Pokemon on this team, but the problem is that there's no support Pokemon. Everything is centered around offense. The issue is, almost all of the best supporting Pokemon in the format are in the lower tiers on Jaden's personal tier list. I found myself staring longingly at Toadscroll, a Pokemon that would work so well here, but alas, it's in the B tier. But then, combing through the A tier for like the hundredth time, I saw something. Toad's cool. Toad's Cruel's pre-evolution was funny enough that Jaden happened to like it a little bit more, meaning I could use it. Toad School's job is to be a disruptive, supportive Pokemon. To do this, it has to survive. I maxed out its HP and nearly maxed out its defense because it's already naturally very specially bulky. 
For moves, I knew I wanted Protect, Spore, and Rage Powder because I wanted Toad School to be as disruptive as possible, but for the last move, I wanted something that could do damage. Problem is, Toad School's offenses are... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> but you know what move can do damage even if your offensive stats suck? Mirror Coat. Lastly, I gave Toad School Terra Water to help it better survive fire and ice type attacks. And with that, the team was done. I sent it over to Jaden, gave her a brief rundown, and together we set off on our journey. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you might have noticed that I always wear a watch. I really love watches because they're both practical and fashionable, and I'm always looking to build out my collection. With that being said, today's sponsor is my personal favorite sponsor that we've had on the channel thus far, Holzkern. Holzkern is a young Austrian company that makes incredibly unique watches and jewelry. Everything Holzkern makes is completely unique because the wood, stone, and knacker that they use in their products each have their own unique grain, marbling, or iridescence. I've been wearing my Holzkern watch ever since it arrived, and even though I don't normally wear jewelry, I actually really love the bracelet and necklace that I got. Holzkern was also super generous and gave me some of their products that I could give as a gift to some of the special women in my own life. Holzkern is actually having a Valentine's Day sale right now. If there's someone you want to impress, or you just want to show a little self-love, I definitely recommend checking out their products. Holzkern even gave a discount code just for viewers of this channel. Use code WOLFY15 at checkout for 15% off store-wide and a free wooden postcard of your choosing. I'll be wearing my Holzkern products for the foreseeable future, so I definitely recommend checking them out using the link in the description. Thanks again to Holzkern for such a cool sponsorship on this video. All epics have something in common. They have a beginning. Our story starts in beginner tier, but Jaden's first opponent was absolutely no joke. Lobo. Lobo, that means wolf. Oh, oh the good old Murkrow. I, I realize yeah. I'm going to be fighting. I'm going to gonna be realize the... Whenever I see Scizor, I go, oh, you poor thing. It's sad when you look at your team and you have one fire type. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, I can't bring you're him. Like, oh. Oh, I didn't. Whoa, it's a shiny tennis school. Oh, yeah, school. I, 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 I asked Toad uh, school. for people to get this. Okay, we got Hydragon Arcanine. We got Hydragon yeah. Arcanine. So you kind of have mm. two options here, depending on who you want to Terra. You could Terra water your Toad School and put something to sleep, or you could Terra Fairy or Skeleturge and just try and get rid of the Hydragon right away. If I Terra right now, though, I don't get to do uh, Stab stab torch song right no you keep the stab actually it's one of the weird things about <gasps> Terra. really yeah. oh then yeah i want to do that yeah go for I wanna it i want to i want to get rid of this thing yeah it's a pain and then with this okay. it's kind of up to you you can spore or protect kind of whatever you feel like my dragon goes for a nasty plot but oh this thing dies <laughs> it's it th this thing gone. dies now <laughs> he wasn't ready for the heat toad's cool no ready. oh my god that's my bad oh I have guy. an Argonite's not super popular, so I wasn't sure if that would KO. Oh, I like how both the, the Pokemon cry out when they kill a Pokemon, though. Yeah, I noticed that, yeah. This thing dies, though. Super gone. I guess just Annihilate. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. Because you don't want to go, you want you probably want to get rid of this Arcanine um, mm -hmm. before you go into King Gambit. The opponent goes into Goldengo, which is a problem for Jaden's now fairy-type Skeleturge. She's forced to switch out. What does King uh, fin Final Gambit... Uh, do exactly so it says you lose all of your hp and however much hp you lost is exactly how much you de like you deal to the target goldango terrestrializes into terra ghost and annihilate takes out arcanine with final gambit make it rain yeah Holy it's a powerful make move. it rain yeah <laughs> wait, what, wait what's it do so it, it's 120 base power so like think of it like as like i think that's overheat space power or close to it um yeah and it hits both your Pokemon, but it also lowers the user's special attack when when it happens. Oh, Scizor. I was hoping for Scizor. Oh, you fool. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> and then with this, it. what you need to know, sorry, before you attack, is that even though that you drop their special attack, Skeleturge uh, ignores their stat changes, which is really good if they boost, but it's not as good if they drop themselves. So just like be aware that like you may want to protect here is my kind of instinct. Because King, uh, King Gambit. I see. I don't know all the stats of the new Pokemon, so I yeah, don't know who's ass to and what do was, what what is what. Yeah. I do like the Ghost Crown though. Me too. Oh, that's nothing. Oh my god. Oh, oh my uh, god! No! Oh, no! Ah, that's my bad. Uh -oh. I led you astray. Uh -oh. <laughs> I over, unfortunately. <laughs> no, Torch Song can do it. Uh, uh yep. My bad. Uh -huh. I led you astray. I'm Make sorry. Make it rain. No, it's okay. 
Now, losing the first game is definitely not ideal, but remember, this was Jaden's first game ever with the team. And I feel like there's a lot we can learn from this. The main takeaway is that we have to be really careful when terrestrializing too early. There's no time to dwell, though. Another battle is right around the corner. Piece of chickles. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Volcarona, Tinkaton. Whoa, look at the cool, like, Daft Punk ass. Whoa, the floor. <laughs> the Dondozo. Don That's like the biggest Pokemon in this game. All the Pokemon it's in this game so are small. Big. So here you have a couple options. Do? You you can honestly just like protect and spore if you want. Like, what are they gonna okay. do about it? I don't really know. So Dondozo is good with his little fish guy. Like he yeah. eats them and He's then not what happens? that good without him in my opinion. Ah, that makes sense. Ooh. He wants oh Toad School gone. The people do not like Toad School. That turn wasn't awful, but it also was not great. Toad School took a ton of damage and the opponent set up a light screen. So let's just, I guess, spore into the Gardevoir and go for Torch Song. We'll start setting We're up. We're allowed to do that? Yeah. I mean, they might KO us, but nah, we'll live. Basically, our plan is we're going to try and beat Dendozo with Meow Scarada. Oh, I don't think we live this. <laughs> oh, not with ah, Crit mattered. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Toad School would have tanked it. He totally would have tanked it. Now, I know that doesn't look like a lot of damage. It's going to be good at some point, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Miascarada? Yep, exactly. So basically, Miascarada is really good because so its signature move always crits, which ignores the effect of like Reflect and Light Screen. So you, you can kind of just kind of go to town on this. If you want, you could Terra here offensively. And if you want to go after. I, okay, so here's the deal. If you want to get rid of Dendozo this turn, you can Terra now, but you probably. Dendozo is asleep, so maybe you want to go after Gardevoir first. Oh, oh, interesting. Nice. So if you KO Guard over here, your Torch Song will get redirected, and then they're going to be in a lot of trouble. I really like Miascarada. I didn't like it at yeah, first. Yeah, we got a crit. <laughs> Super lucky. Torch Song. Tinkaton. Oh, that did a lot. That's with Light Screen up, too. Mudsdale comes out next, but Jaden has a huge advantage. So how does the Terra typing actually work? You still have all, all your stab, but now... You have an extra stab? Yes, so that's exactly right. So offensively, you keep your original stabs, and then you also get a new stab. And if you turn into a type you already were, then your stab just becomes bigger. Um, mm -hmm. And defensively, you become the type. So like oh, here, okay. like, um, yeah, like here, are, like the Muddale well, is fighting defensively, and it's fighting in ground offensively, basically. Mudsdale's Earthquake KOs Tinkaton, putting Jaden even further in the lead. Skeleturge launches a Terra Blast into Mudsdale. Yeah. Do a ton of damage. Whoa! Oh my god. With only Dendozo left and Meowskarada still alive, the opponent has no hope of winning. Ah, oh. oh, I gave up. Nice job. I should nice. have made a better training card for this. I've played literally over 50 games and my trainer card is awful. Like, it's like... <laughs> The dweebiest, like, and the worst part is a lot of people have cool ones, you know what I mean? And so every time yeah. I, like, I, I feel like I'm losing from the start. <laughs> Jaden ranks up to beginner tier two. Oh, right. I haven't actually explained that yet. Basically, there are 11 tiers on the ladder, and we're trying to get to the very top one, Master Ball tier. You play against other people who are in your tier, so this challenge is going to get harder and harder the further up the ladder we get. What does so the all are... tree guy do? The tree guy is tanky and pretty strong. Um, I, I, you're hovering over Meow Scarada. I like that here. I think that's a great call. Honestly, there's not really any wrong answers. I say don't bring Toad School, but let, you try picking the Pokemon here. There's not really wrong answers. Uh, I know, I it's a lot of pressure, but I, I want to or... give you the chance. <laughs> I don't remember if the, the purple guy is Steel, but he Skeleturge is good for Garchomp and Scizor. I don't know if I want him out front, maybe? He works both up front and back here, so don't stress too much mm. about it. Wait, what, what's the high dragon? Oh, geez, I'm running out of time. You're fine, you're fine. Um, no. No. This one. And <laughs> this one. It, it is okay, yeah. That's that's what I would have done for what it's worth. Uh, really? Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah, I'm nice so job. confident now. <laughs> <laughs> Terra Skeledurge, then mm -hmm. that's okay, right? That's super good here. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. I don't know what to do with me. Flower, flower Trick into Edermon. Like, I would say maybe Flower Trick the Glamora to get some damage on it. And then Terra Blast the Garchomp just to get damage on it. Oh, Ooh. ground. He got rid of the... He knew. He knew. Yeah. Um, Flower Trick is the move I click most times on Meowskarada because it's just so strong. So if they Earthquake here, that they're going to KO their own Pokemon because they had the Air Balloon. Wait, how do you know it has the Air Balloon? Uh, when they oh, sent it out, it sent a little message out that I, I happened to see. Ah. <laughs> That's quite all right with us. Ooh. Cerro okay. Edge. 
What a cool Pokemon. I guess there's no downside to protecting for a sec, right? Jaden protects both of her Pokemon, hoping the opponent will Earthquake themselves, but they don't. Okay, Declaw. Flower Trick Garchomp. It's so tempting because he's all ground. Ghost Psychic, did you say? No, Fire Psychic. Fire, and fire it's immune ghost. to fire type attacks. So I guess we just try to slack off, right? Exactly, yeah. So this is really, I really like this play. Great job, by the way. I really like this play because, yeah, if Garchomp were to protect or switch out, then, like, you're even more likely to survive and heal up again. Sarah Ledge takes out Meowth Skrata, but in exchange, Skeleturge is able to heal up. Wait, listen, listen, listen. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. That's the old yawn sound. <laughs> uh, you said Hydreigon takes care of... Uh, yep, exactly. The, can I just tear, just go, like, ham uh, on him like this? Uh, so nope. I, I feel like maybe let's go for a Torch Song here because your life orb on Hydreigon, which so you should KO it. This way, like, oh. even if something goes wrong, you're still getting a boost and you're, like, becoming stronger, you know? Our Believer protects, but Hydreigon is able to take out Sarah Ledge, putting the Pokemon count in Jaden's favor. Garchomp comes back out. Jaden switches Hydreigon into King Gambit and launches a Torch Song at Garchomp, putting it in rage of King Gambit's Sucker Punch. So we can Sucker Punch the yep. Garchomp? Yep, they got it. <laughs> I, I always feel evil when I click no, it's so punch. mean. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. Nice move. This should go. Nice. Jaden wins another game. I just want to take a second and ask you to subscribe. For Scarlet and Violet, I have quadrupled the amount of videos that I'm putting out. So subscribing now is like the best bang for your buck. I'm really trying to be the first competitive Pokemon channel to reach 1 million subscribers, and I kind of need your help to do it. Regardless, I really appreciate you watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Oh, I, I was just saying Dillian. On paper, this type of team can be a nightmare without any way to change the weather. Blizzard has a 20% chance to freeze, and with snow active, it can't miss. Luckily for Jaden, the entire composition looks like Skeleturge food. Yeah, I was going to say, this is a lot of, like, lice types and dragon yeah. types. What's your instinct here? Which Pokemon do you think look good? thinking, like, King Gamb Gambit somewhere in the back. Probably Annihilate, too, right? Yeah. Just... Then lastly, yeah, one of those two, kind of up to yeah, you. Yeah, I guess yep, it doesn't that's what I would really recommend. matter. The opponent starts off with a Bomasnow and Sylveon, threatening a ton of spread damage right out of the gate. They, like, oh... Bring out another ice type. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but this is nice because now it's in um it's in uh Terra Blast range, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah. This song also goes hard. There's so many I songs like this in this lot. game that are so crazy. I think I wanna play it slow and do Terra Blast Garchomp. Go for it. Yeah. I don't wanna take I don't wanna take the the earthquake. Yeah. No, I think that makes a ton of sense because if they like basically if this goes well if they don't do like a very specific move, they'll you'll probably go up like Three against, or like three against two, right? Which I think is super valuable. Jaden gets the final gambit off against Sylveon, making the game immediately a three versus three. Garchomp gets greedy and tries to set up a swords dance, but Jaden shuts that one down immediately. Skeleturge <laughs> comes out on top. Uh, you know what you really mean? Yes. You can go me out of here, and basically most of Bomasnow are Terra Water. So you could, if you <laughs> wanted, like go for a Flower Trick and uh, Torch Long in the same turn. Oh. Be like, <laughs> yeah, well, Terra or not, you're kind of in trouble. We do have to watch out for that, though, because that thing has Slush Rush, which makes it fast. I have absolutely no what idea what po what Setitan is. It's just pretty tanky. So Titan gets a big ice spinner off into Jaden's Meow Skirata, but thanks to the Focus Sash, it survives with one HP. Our plan to bully the Aboma Snow works like a charm, and doubling into it immediately removes it from the field. Wait, why didn't I get hit by hail? Oh, is it? Oh, I guess it changed it's just... it. It's snow now. So basically what? now, instead of taking hail damage, it makes the ice type's physical defense 50% higher, which is why your flower trick did like not that much damage. Oh, oh, interesting. With only some Titan left against three Pokemon, Jaden easily picks up the win. It's like we bring, is it Skeleturf, Meow, Skirata, and then someone else, someone else? Yeah, I like Skeleturf a ton here. Could do Toad School if you wanted, you don't have to. This is actually not a bad matchup for Annihilate because of the Meow, Skirata. It's sometimes it's nice to just like U-turn and bring them down to Focus Dash right away. I would say don't bring Hydreig into this, but the others are kind of up to you. How does like this go? Perfect. Yeah, that's great. The game starts off with the opponent leading with Grim Snarl and Azumarill, which means that Annihilate immediately puts on a ton of offensive pressure. I recommend Torch Song and Grim Snarl. When I use Annihilate, I almost always just click Final Gambit. So my brain says, let's just Final Gambit the Azumarill, make it a 3v3 and get a boost, whereas they don't have a boost. The Azumarill sees through our plan and protects to avoid the Final Gambit KO. Grim Snarl surprises us by tricking an Iron Ball onto Annihilate. This gives me flashbacks to last format. Is it... <laughs> scarfed into trick i actually don't think so i think it's it's okay 
Yeah, I don't think so. He has to do no. an another turn. Oh. Can, what if I protect and then final gambit? The problem is that because of the iron ball, you're probably slower than now. So I like protect. Oh, protect. Wow. That's Skeletor's. Oh? Oh, the cry. Oh, spirit interesting. Break. He starved into spirit break. What's your spirit break? Is that just a it, fairy type move? Just a fairy type. Oh my god, they did a lot of damage. What should we do? I'm lost. Okay, this is a weird position. Why don't we just torch song the Grim Snarl? It's not like it's really threatening that much, right? Basically, our plan will be let's try and win with Meow Scrata next to Skeleturge. Jaden launches a torch song into the Rotom Heat that switched in, putting her at plus two, but she takes an Aqua Jet for her trouble. King Gambit's Iron Head forces a Zoom Roll to eat its Citrus Berry, but it's now in danger from Rotom Heat's Overheat. Should we, like, maybe Terrastalize Terra Blast? Because we're, like, plus two, right? Yeah, go for it. Jaden tries to get some damage down with Sucker Punch, but Rotom makes a great play and uses will o -Wisp to burn King Gambit. Terra Blast goes into a Zoom Roll, but it just barely misses the KO. That's actually, that's actually, okay, that's honestly really good for us. That's, like, okay. a best case scenario. Because now, like, your King Gambit can Sucker Punch it, and you can slack off and go back to full HP, right? Sucker Punch finishes off a Zoom Roll, but Rotom launches Overheat into Skeleturge. But it survives and is able to heal Ooh. back up thanks to Slack Off and Leftovers. Aww. Oh. Wait, why do they Terra that? Wait, why do they tear up? They're going to be Iron Head. That's fine. Whatever. I would say, yeah, mate, let's just go for Torch Song, right? Because if Dragonite goes down, Meow Skarada can probably win, right? I feel so like I let's hit Dragonite Grimstone? just in case they hit us with something weird. Because Grimstone is not okay. that threatening, you know what I mean? Right, so close combat and this <laughs> yeah, Dragonite. Yeah, let's do it. That's so, I love hitting Pokemon with, like, not very effective moves for super effective damage, you know? Ball. Aww. Oh, oh, that's good. No, no, that's good. That's super good. Oh, I wanted to hit the Dragon. Oh, Jaden. Okay, watch. Watch, 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 watch. Hmm. Okay, well, th that part was bad. Well, forget it. Don't watch that part. <laughs> Okay. Oh my god. We just got like such a boost. Yeah, we're we're definitely taking out Rotom now. This is a real slobber knocker. What is that? No, what is that? That is a disgusting word. What is that? I don't Who's know. Th Isn't it like a fight? Slob like a real slug. Jaden decides to go on the offensive and launches a torch song into Dragonite. Annihilate goes down because the Iron Ball made it the slowest Pokemon on the field, but that's okay. We get a free switch into Meow Skarada, who has the potential to finish up this game. Oh, I thought they were going to get Skeledurge. They probably thought, they probably hoped that you weren't Sash. If you're not, if, you, if you're not Sash there, then they could in theory KO both with like Spirit Break. Mm. Since we knew you were Sash, you didn't worry about it. <laughs> we get a slack off too. Skeledurge and King Gambit finish off Dragonite, and they've got way too much health left to ever lose to this Grimmsnarl. Jaden's starting to get more comfortable with this team, and I think winning a long, drawn-out battle like this one really demonstrates that. Now, this is a Toad School match. <gasps> Gastrodon. Gastrodon. How do you normally see if it's a Toad School match? So, I see they have Garchomp, Garganackle, Tikitar, Gastron, and Amoongus, and none of those Pokemon can get rid of Toad School easily. And they have Arcanine, but we can mm. Terra Water it, and, when, like, Terra Water's totally good here. In this match, we're gonna I'm going to show you a new mode with the team. I think let's do Hydreigon up front. Let's do, we definitely want Meowth Skarada here because Grass hits like four of the Pokemon for super effective. You're going to want either King Gambit or Annihilate here. King Gambit is like a little bit more consistent, I would say. But Annihilate is really nice because it, there's some really bulky Pokemon here and it could be nice to just like eliminate them immediately. Mm, I'll do I'll do King Gambit. Yeah. Things start out pretty rough. The opponent leaves off with Garchomp and Arcanine who are exerting a lot of pressure on poor Toad School. Pair of water and then Spore. Um... What's better? What would you I say? I think Gar your Garchomp's worth scary, right? Because it can it can sleep your yeah. uh your, your it can it can kill your Hydreigon. I recommend Terra watering Toad School to make sure it makes it through the turn and protect, and the turn goes pretty much as well as we could hope. Flare Blitz doesn't do too much damage, and Garchomp falls asleep. Can I just do this? Spore Arcanine. Yeah, go for it. What heck are they gonna do about it? My Dragon's Draco Meteor takes out Garchomp, which is great. Arcanine, however, hits us with a surprise move: Wild Charge. Somehow, Toad School survives this too and puts the Arcanine to sleep. Amogus? <laughs> oh, wait, they can actually spore us now. This is a great position, but uh, I kind of make a mistake. Amoongus normally isn't exactly known for its offensive pressure, but uh, with Meowth Garada, it can actually do quite a bit of damage. I misled Jaden, telling her that I thought she was safe if she rage powdered, but Meowth Garada ends up taking a really big pollen puff for her trouble. Now we're in a bit of a pinch. We no longer have a grass type to ignore Spore and Rage Powder, and the rest of our team struggles to get rid of Amoongus quickly. Nice. Okay, good thing we didn't protect. Hopefully it KOs itself. That'd be so... If it KOs itself here, we're in really good shape. Oh, man. This thing just won't go down. This game, yeah. if you're going to win, it's going to have to be because of King Gambit. 
It's like kind of the make mm. or break. But a good, smart, it's really good that you took out the gar the um the Garchomp already because that is one of the biggest counters. Ooh, Garganzo. Gar Minecraft temple ass looking guy. I call him Minecraft Donkey okay. Kong. <laughs> Minecraft Donkey Kong. Jaden sees a way out, going for a flinch on Amoongus, but uh, she's not exactly known for her luck, and so Hydragon falls asleep. At this point, there's nothing stopping Garganacle from just salt curing all of our Pokemon into oblivion, and Jaden takes a loss. On the plus side, this was a really close battle, and if just a couple things had gone differently, I absolutely think we could have won. Uh, what should we do here? So you want to bring both Skeleturge and Annihilate maybe up front because Corviknight's a problem and you need to respect it. I think you want Meowth Skarada in the back as the last... It'll probably be Hydreigon actually because of Hydreigon. At this point, I want to start pushing Jaden a bit. I tell her to take the reins so she can test out what she's been learning. And it's clear she's a very fast learner. The opponent leads with Garchomp and Rotom. And so to eliminate her weaknesses to Earthquake and Hydro Pump, she Terra Fairy Skeleturge and Final Gambit and one shots the Rotom. Garchomp survives the Terra Blast, but it's now extremely threatened by Meow Skarada. Something that I think is cool is like sometimes it's better not to take a KO. Like sometimes you prefer, like remember that Azumarill game earlier where we could Sucker Punch and Slack off to heal up? Sometimes like leaving a Pokemon on the field being like, I will deal with you like next turn is better than- Yeah, Nihilape, he's coming in to take a, take a guy. Yeah, well, okay, so uh, a lot of Nihilape are Scarf like ours, but a lot of them are, are actually bulk up and they make themselves super bulky. Garchomp doesn't want to get knocked out, so it protects to stick around for one more turn. Annihilate launches a Drain Punch into Meowth Grotta, meaning it's most likely the bulky bulk up set. Skeleturge doesn't take any damage this turn and is able to do a good bit of damage to the opposing Annihilate. Mm, I'm just gonna do it again. Go for it. Oh, they got the double. <gasps> he got the double protect. You. Oh God. He went for the double and got it. If that if that hadn't happened, you would have just auto automatically won. Ah. Uh... Rage oh, but they're fist. rage fisting into who? On Skeledurge? They only hit it once. It's not that powerful. Yeah. And they maybe thought like, oh, I need to get rid of Skeledurge. Or maybe they thought that Meowth might protect, which would have been valid too. I feel like they overthought that one. Yeah, <laughs> and I just go, sure. do it again. <laughs> Triple protect. It's a one and nine. They're not going to get it. Grim oh, we're, Snarl. Oh, you do need to watch out for this thing because it can get fake okay. out. So maybe just play defensive for a turn. Protect, protect. Yeah. This is I a good teaching so. moment. Sometimes in Pokemon, it's really important to slow the pace of the game down. Protecting with both your Pokemon might seem passive, but it has a couple benefits. First, it lets Skeleturge heal a little bit of its HP back with leftovers, and it also lets you see what your opponent wanted to do and kind of tells you where their priorities are. This ends up working out perfectly, because the Garchomp shows that it's actually Terra Fire and that it wants to go for Rock Slide. Now that Garchomp's a Fire type, Knock Off is stronger than Flower Trick. Jaden tries to KO Garchomp and, just in case, uses Slack Off with Skeleturge in case things go wrong. Isn't they went for Spirit Break last turn? I, okay, okay. Oh my god, this, you got this guy. You super got them. <laughs> Does he get rid of my Meow Skarada now? Yeah, but if, I guess it's kind of like they're screwed regardless because if they get rid of Meow Skarada, then your, I mean, your Skeletor is at full HP. Yeah. Hydreigon comes in, and if we can just get rid of this Garchomp, Skeletor will win the game for sure. Bro, <laughs> no! <laughs> they went for the double double! Double double! <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you get two free? <laughs> you don't get two. With it failing, Hydreigon picks up the KO on Garchomp, and there's no yeah, way for Grimmsnarl to beat Skeletor. Yeah. Jane has made it all the way into Great Ball tier. Real quick. <gasps> Great Ball tier! <gasps> Brother! What? They have, like, a big sis. Look at the a last big sis? one. They have, uh, they've got the toad. Hydra. Unload the toad. <gasps> Oh, they go. <laughs> Here, the opponent has several weird Pokemon, so Jaden asked for my advice. Okay, I think let's do Skeleturge because it's like there's a lot of like fire and fire weak Pokemon on this team. Let's do Annihilate up front because we might want to use U-turn to break the Focus Sash on the Kilowattrol. And I think King Gambit is pretty good here because it's just such a good Pokemon. It's good into like the fairies. Let's do Meow Skarada because Toad Scroll can spore and it's nice to have a spore immune. I recommend leading Annihilate and Skeleturge. And it ends up working out pretty well because these two Pokemon are especially strong into Tinkaton and Grimmsnarl that the opponent leads. We might want to save Final Gambit for later, so I recommend you turning and Torch Songing this turn. So I feel like let's yeah. just do one this more. Okay, nice. Oh. This is really nice because, oh, they gave us Defiance. Oh. Or unless they're Flash Fire? No. I guess Arcanine's a little bit spooky with, with what we brought, but it, it also isn't like, okay. Ah. Maybe we go Meowth mm -hmm. Grotta, we Flower Trick to get rid of the Grimmsnarl, and then we just we just keep Torch Songing because Arcanine can't really like do that much damage. Uh, Torch Song, just like Grimmsnarl or something? Yeah, just in case it survives. My chat is talking about drinking milk. Uh, are you a milk drinker? No, so I actually have a condition called Milk Curse, 
I may have mentioned it before. I feel like I might have. Um, milk curse? Milk curse. Yeah, so basically, like, you know how you have, like, super bad luck? All my bad luck is concentrated into when I go into the vicinity of milk. So, like, weird stuff happens when I, like, when I start to, like, go near milk. Like, um, like, it will, like, the milk will explode. It will go bad the day after you buy it. It's, like, I've just stopped buying it because milk curse is so powerful. But I can do with, like, milk substitutes, like oat milk or soy milk or whatever. Uh, I think let's just keep clicking torch song into, I guess, like, into the thing that's not Arcanine. Did you say it's focus ash? It normally is focus ash. You can sucker punch it and just see what happens. I was hoping that our opponent would get antsy and let us take out their kilowattroll, but they play it smart and go for a tailwind, nullifying our sucker punch. The Arcanine's also being a bit of a pain here, using Snarl to not only lower Skeletor to special attack, but to also finish off Meow Skirata. This looks like a bit of a tough spot, but we do have the ever-reliable King Gambit still to bail us out. Jaden launches another Sucker Punch into the Kilowattro, but it protects. This means that Torch Song was also blocked by Protect this turn, which might seem like a misplay. The thing is though, Jaden has effectively stalled out the Tailwind. Arcanine does get a Flare Blitz off, but we Terrestrialize into Flying type, making the damage negligible. And by making the same play next turn, we can finally get rid of this stupid Kilowattro. Once again, Wild Charge Arcanine. I swear this isn't actually common. It does big damage to King Gambit, but like I said, he's reliable. King Gambit narrowly hangs on and is even able to heal back a bit with Citrus Berry. Torch Song finishes off Kilowattrol, who did again go for a double protect. Jaden protects both her Pokemon, stalling the last turn of Tailwind. And now there's one clear win condition. As long as Jaden takes out this terrestrialized Tinkaton, she's able to win with Skeleturge. <laughs> you wanna be, do you wanna just like really mean? You could um final gambit the Tinkaton. Annihilate deletes Tinkaton with final gambit, and this game is over. Toad's cool. Maybe we bring out Toad's cool. Skeledurge for sure, because of all the dragons. And we need King Gambit for the guy. Maybe just Hydreigon? The opponent leads off with Serilege and Murkrow, both of which match up very well into Jaden's Toad School. Cornbread. Cornbread. Cornbread the Murkrow? I like that name. Jaden goes for a Torch Song into the Murkrow to set up for a KO the next turn and tries to get a little bit cheeky and spores, but Murkrow isn't messing around and stops it with Taunt. All right, I think Toad School got to He's got to go. Gotta out. He said, he said, my people need me. So What's King Gambit is weak guess... fire, but Hydreigon resists it. So that's probably... Yeah. Can we just Torch Song again on yep. Murkrow? Yep. You want to delay your Terra this game because if they have Goldango in the back, you you really don't want to turn into a like a fairy type too early. So you need to confirm what their last Pokemon are before you really go ham. Serilege goes for a Shadow Sneak into Skeleturge, which normally wouldn't be that big a deal because Skeleturge's ability ignores Serilege's attack boost, but it crits. So it probably oh, it was a crit? Oh, I was guessing that did way more than I expected. <gasps> that did a lot too. But you might KO here, and if you KO here, you're in kind of good shape, I think. Do I just... I'll, maybe yeah, I'll just... just it. Dark it. Draco meter. Yeah, and just protect. And protect. Yeah, I think that's a good play. Jaden makes a great call here. She preserves her Skeleturge and immediately deletes the opposing Hydreigon with a Draco Meteor. Now she's up four against two and she hasn't even terrestrialized yet. Bring so we can yeah. Terra, right? If we can just get your health back up, yeah. So I think you want to switch your Hydreigon out here because you want to deal with, with these guys later, right? What if I did Terra Protect? It I would Terra Slack off mean. in that case. Terra if you want to do that. I'll try it. Okay. You should live this. We nice, yeah, we definitely need Terra to take that. Do like a dragon. Oh! oh! Holy sh the read. Holy. That's fine, because you got the slack off off. Yeah. Wow, wow. Now we get to bring Toad School back out, go for a Rage Powder to help us stay alive, and launch a plus two special attack Terra Blast into Dragonite. But it survives. That's okay though. Hydreigon outspeeds and threatens KOs on everything, and Skeleturge has way too much HP to go down. Jaden picks off the remaining Pokemon and secures another win. Also I'm going to give you advice on the Mons here because this is a weird team. I think we want to do Hydreigon up front next to Skeleturge. And then in the back, we definitely want King Gambit here. I think Meow Skirata. So basically, like, the first three should definitely be coming. And then the set, like, it was it was between Annihilate or Meow Skirata. And I, I thought Meow Skirata was better here because this is kind of a hyper offense team. And I think the ability to have Focus Sash is actually pretty valuable. To start, the opponent sends out Talonflame and Hydreigon, which is a very bad matchup for us who have used Hydreigon and Skeleturge. The big problem here is that both of the Pokemon that we led are really threatened by Hydreigon. In order to survive the turn, we kind of want to terrestrialize both, which isn't allowed. I don't particularly like making difficult decisions, so I decided to uh, trust the process, by which I mean I made Jaden pick. You what? Sorry, I kind of um, threw in the fire. Draco Meteor. Hmm? Terra. I. Uh, no, why would I do that? 
No! <laughs> <laughs> Don't think. Uh oh. What's coming out? Probably the Hydreigon. If this is Terra like Steel, you are the most cracked player of all. Jane, Holy! Crack Holy! Sh I did it! <laughs> you are so good! Holy oh my cow. god! Oh my god! <laughs> that is unbelievable. What a read. Oh. Uh oh. No! <laughs> it's okay, you still survive. As long as you don't flinch, you're actually in pretty good shape. You take out the Terra right away. Yeah! <laughs> Yes! Oh, <laughs> nice you. It was all it was all planned. <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm just in their head. <laughs> it's still different. It's casual. I don't know if I would have made that play, even if I knew they were Terra Steel, so the fact that you made it like <laughs> After Jaden's brain blast, the opponent sends out Arcanine. Even though we're up a Pokemon, the position still feels very precarious. Tailwind just got set up, and Arcanine and Talonflame are putting out a ton of offensive pressure. But Jaden remembers one of the tricks that I taught her, slowing down the pace of the battle. So this is tricky because we could Terra Steel, but then they could make the read right back. If we could just get like one Tailwind up or one Draco Meteor into this Talonflame, we'd be in pretty good shape. Uh, I could see them play roughing again. Why not? Okay. Yeah, I, so for the... me, I'd be like, why not? Jaden wants to get a Tailwind off. So she Terra Steals her Hydreigon, expecting that the Arcanine will go for play rough again. Talonflame KOs Skeleturge with Brave Bird. And maybe they were mad about the earlier prediction and wanted to get even, but the Arcanine predicts the Terra Steel and KOs our Hydreigon with Flare Blitz. Our back's against the wall, and we also don't have Terra available. This game looks like it might be over. Unless... Okay, we're gonna have to play... We gotta, we gotta make a big move here. We're gonna double Sucker Punch the Talonflame, I think. Or the Arcanine, but I think we have a higher chance of killing the Talonflame. Thinking about it. They're Hopefully starting to cook. The screen. What can, looking at their cookbook. What are they cooking? What recipes we got? <laughs> it makes 67. <laughs> no. Not 67 yeah! recipes. Okay, we're still this. Maybe. Okay, we really need them to flare blitz. No, not that suck. Come on, King Gambit. You got if nobody else got me. Oh. <gasps> he got Huge him. survive. The double sucker punch play is huge. We're back in this, but we're definitely not out of the woods yet. Thankfully, the last Pokemon is Goldengo, which is a really bad matchup into our double dark types. There's a chance that they expect, since we just showed Sucker Punch, they might expect us to Sucker Punch again. If we win this, we're honestly so cracked. Oh, wait, that's, that's, I think we can win. I think we win now. Oh, we definitely win. We won. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, they play, we got in their head. We absolutely got in their head. We did. That was, uh, that's a, that was a nutty comeback. That was looking doomed. Ah, uh, whoa. Oh my God. That is a crazy wait, a game. Crit. That is ridiculous oh, damage. Damn. Uh, does anything take out King of king gambit that's what i'm thinking like king gambit looks so strong here yeah can um, we lead so, with king yeah gambit, let's lead though? yeah why not like yeah what are they gonna do about king it? gambit and his little friend toad's cool i kind of like annihilate here because it outspeeds the it outspeeds both dragapult and meow scrotta and um mm. kilowattro and I, the last one either meow scrotta or hydragon your 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 choice um i'm down for hydragon he, he's cool. put he's uh put in the work He's been good. I agree. Huh. So here we're like things look pretty good for us, but we have to keep in mind that Sylveon often run Terra Fire, Terra Blast. So you might just want to keep that in mind when you make any move. Mm. Well, then if it's gonna Terra, then I want to spore it. Yeah, I agree. Maybe you could just protect well... it because it will do a lot of damage. Oh, true, 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 true. Sylveon starts off the battle by Terrastalizing into the Fire type, while Kilowattro goes for a Tailwind. We block Sylveon's Terra Blast with a Protect, a really smart play in a position that a lot of players might have just gone for an Iron Head. We unload the Toad, putting Kilowattrel to sleep. I think you either go for Spore Kilowattrel, and I think you always go for Kowtow Cleave into Sylveon to get some damage down. If you think they're going to Air Slash, then you Spore, and if you think they're going to Thunderbolt into King Gambit, you Rage Powder. But the truth is that, like, Thunderbolt's not going to do that much, so you're probably fine just to Spore it. And then Kowtow, did you say? Yeah, I think so. Into Sylveon, because it's a Fire type now. I totally forgot about Electro Ball. Though, honestly, I was really surprised that it picked up the KO. King Gamma going down makes this a lot more difficult, but on the plus side, at least both of our opponents are asleep. Hydreigon's really going to have to put in some work if we want to win this battle. Thankfully, the Sylveon stays asleep, which lets us get a bit of damage off unscathed. So here, we could get a little cheeky. We could go for Mirror Coat, Terra Steel, and Tailwind. If the Sylveon wakes up, like, it'll KO itself. You know what I mean? Sure. You want to go for it? So we Mirror yeah. Coat, wait for a wake up, Terra Steel, and uh, Tailwind. Tailwind, I think, yeah. Enough sleeping. Oh! <gasps> Hyper Voice? No! Oh! No! <laughs> Why would they do that? Yeah. Wait, we're gonna live. We're gonna live. We're gonna live. Oh. Okay. And then? <laughs> I thought it was going on Hydreigon. I was, I was freaking out. 
<laughs> yeah! <laughs> so cool. I think this is winnable. Okay, I see the vision. Spore the Kilowattrel mm. and Dark Pulse the Kilowattrel here. That's my advice. What What's cooking? Because here's what's the thing. In the, they, what's in the pot? Both, both of these Pokemon oh. cannot have Focus Sash. So there's the Focus Sash on the Kilowattrel, which means if we either get the flinch or the three turn sleep, then Meowth is like in range of Annihilate. Oh, we got the three turn sleep. Hopefully they take out Toad School here. Oh. Yes, yeah. that's super good. Okay, because we know where the focus sash is. It's on the Kilowattrel. So you can just close combat mm. the Meowth and Dark Pulse the... They might be able to protect Kilowattrel, but they can't protect their Meowth from you. Oh. It should kill, oh. right? Okay, yeah, hold on. Does. Oh, we it got didn't a matter. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. The fact that this is even possible is like pretty wild given how bad it started. <laughs> it's the Cassiopeia music, Wolf. It it's is. The it we got up. double crit. We got double crit. <laughs> <laughs> After getting the double knockout, things are looking a lot better. All High Dragon has to do is KO Dragapult with Dark Pulse, and this game's a wrap. Except, uh, for some reason, I recommend Draco Meteor. And the thing about Draco Meteor is that 10% of the time, it does no damage. 10% isn't that high, so surely it's not gonna happen. Right? <laughs> Moment of truth. A dragon, Drago, Draco Meteor. It hits! Yeah! Thankfully, Draco Meteor connects. And with that, Jaden is in the penultimate tier, Ultra Ball tier. Once she climbs out of this one, she will have made it to Master Ball. Lord Almighty. Okay, Look this is a really weird scary... ones. This is a, uh, yeah. Oh God, okay. You definitely want to lead Annihilate here for sure. I think Hydreigon as well. I think Hydreigon is going to be our chief, like our, our prime Tarot uh, can oh, here. Oh, interesting. You're going to mm -hmm. want King Gambit in the back. I think probably Meowth Garada here. Ooh. This is like a really, this is a very threatening team. So like, yeah, sorry for kind of, mm -hmm. we're going to try and like out offense them rather than trying to like, try to like slowly set up on them. Okay. So here we're definitely going to lock into close combat, I think. And I think it's the mice. That's my instinct. <laughs> I love, I love the mice so much. And I think you want to dark pulse into the Meowth here because I'm a little worried about Trick Room, which is why otherwise we'd Tailwind, but it could be Trick Room here. Mousel switches out to resist the close combat, but this doesn't improve their position that much. Oh, they went for Trick Room. Okay, that's fine. Flinch, flinch, flinch. Oh, we got a flinch. flinch. That might be a win. So oh, go I, ahead. Wait, it just hit the, the cat, right? Yep. And then this guy. You can just dark pulse it. Oh. Oh. They just see they, they gave up. They gave up already. <laughs> Turn one, they gave up. Yeah. Hydreigon, Galadurge, and Gambit, Annihilate. Try and like nice. deal with the Talon Flame and then figure the rest out after. The opponent has Talon Flame, which has been giving us a ton of trouble all day. They lead with Talon Flame and Glamora, which is just scary for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it's just my World Champ sense, but I'm a little worried about this. Okay, what do you what do you think we should do with Hydreigon here? Does Talon Flame Tailwind? Yeah, it will Talon here. I don't know too much about Glamora, but I know that it learns dazzlingly. I suggest going Terra Steel on Hydreigon just to be safe. It might be worrying a little bit too much, but I don't know. I think Glamora is actually pretty strong. Talonflame sets up a Tailwind, and Glomora immediately terrestrializes and launches a Dazzling Gleam. King Gambit shrugs it off, and Hydreigon takes minimal damage before retaliating with a huge chunk of Talonflame's health. What's your instinct here? Just Dark Pulse, right? I kind of wonder if we could protect with both to stall a turn, you know what I mean? That's what we got, okay. I think now is a good chance to go for our Tailwind. Glamora goes for another Dazzling Gleam, which leads Jaden to ask if it might be Choice Lock, which is actually a really good point. It totally could be. It looks like it's just... <laughs> stuff doing it does right because like there's not really stuff. a reason to dazzle my dragon successfully gets a tailwind off and armor, armor rouge is sent out next so that thing can't tear you could just dark pulse it if you wanted don't mind if i do don't mind if i do and then maybe iron head like jaden finds a great play she iron heads glamora as it reveals spiky shield but dark pulse picks up the ko on armor rouge the opponent's tailwind runs out and we still have two turns left yes Karata. Karata hit Miascarada hard with yeah, Draco Meteor? Perfect. I love that, yeah. Oh, nice job, <gasps> Jaden! Oh, damn. Yeah, especially, that was a really good move because since we have an Annihilate on the back, like, even if one of them survives, we can just clean up from there. Okay, the pressure is on. If we win this battle, we might make it to Master Ball tier. Jaden is really starting to get into a groove, and I feel like we could definitely do this. The problem, though, is that our next opponent has a very tricky team. Annihilate and wait, how do we and Hydreigon for sure, right? Yeah, I so I think Annihilate, but we can lock in Annihilate because that's going to be our lead. Mm -hmm. I feel like they don't have that much for Skeleturge, so I'm kind of down to do Skeleturge here up front. 
Yeah, I love Skill of Dirt. I think we want King Gambit in the back for the Sylveon and the Armor Rouge. And kind yeah. of the Mises too. And then the last one, I think it's got to be either Hydreigon or Miascarada, and that's personal preference. Ooh. I like Hydreigon. I do too. I do too. The opponent starts off strong, leading with Armor Rouge and Sylveon against our Annihilate and Skeleturge. I would say this is a pretty neutral position. There's not like a clear advantage here. You could just final gambit into the armor if you wanted and Terra and um torch song the sylveon or you could u-turn out like i think there's multiple good options here what does it do oh we just kill it we just don't know what it's doing so it's not the end of the world to so just take it out in one yeah. shot like annihilate is useful to have but we should have enough tools against the stuff that we need it against the opponent sends out backscalibur to replace their fallen armor and i think that things are looking pretty good so you need to be careful not to hit this thing with a fire move preemptively because power is up with it. You tear your King Gambit here, but it's a little risky in case you get it wrong. No, I don't want to do it too yet. Oh, yeah, unless protect Let's and maybe protect. Torch Song into then... the Sylveon. Jaden decides be. not to terrestrialize yet and launches a Torch Song towards Sylveon. This ends up being a great choice. King Gambit switches in and takes 60% mm. of its health for its trouble. It Glaive Rush does do a ton of damage into Skeleturge, but now it's going to take double damage the next turn, prompting a defensive play. So I think you want to Iron Head the back's caliber here. The question is, what do you want to do with your Skeleturge? You could you could just protect. It's not that bad of a move. Backscalibur does protect. Jaden protects her Skeleturge to recover a little health from Leftovers, and the Iron Head fails into the Protect. Now Jaden has a choice to make. If she gets this play right, she could potentially just win the game here and now. She chooses to Terra Fairy her Skeleturge to survive Glaive Rush and Sucker Punch. The problem is, Backscalibur has its own trap card up its sleeve. Terra Ground. King Gambit protects, and we can see the next move before it happens. How much is this going to do to poor Skeleturge? Oh! Oh, a ton of damage. They live. The game's not over yet. I recommend protecting Skeleturge and switching into Hydreigon to try and regain a little bit of position. Sucker Punch. Okay. That was oh. almost very bad. So I think you just send it. I think you just drag me to the back's caliber and, and Torch Song the King Gambit. They're okay. like, all right, like you're gonna, you can save one of them, but not both. The pressure from Hydreigon forces Backscalibur to protect, and Skeleturge cleanly picks up the King Gambit. Sylveon comes back out, but Backscalibur just protected. If we can knock it out this turn, King Gambit and Skeleturge should be able to beat Sylveon. Probably. Okay, nice. Nice. Okay. Super good. So it's all down to the Sylveon. If it can take out your whole team, it can definitely take out Hydreigon. <laughs> the question is, what about the rest of them? <laughs> Skeleturge, I put a ton of speed into oh. it just in case it's battered, and it looks like it will. Skeleturge heals up. Sylveon goes for the Hyper Voice, KOing Hydreigon, doing a bit of damage to Skeleturge, and activating its Throat Spray, making it even stronger. It's time for the moment of truth. It all comes down to whether or not King Gambit can outspeed Sylveon. Skeleturge's Torch Song does a fair bit of damage, but it all comes down to King Gambit. Will it outspeed? Oh. It's gonna be close. King Gambit's faster! Yeah! Oh my god. We beat it. We did it! Oh my god! Whoa! <laughs> Damn! You're you you're calling so many things right. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah! Let's go! We did that's it! Amazing. And that's how Jaden reached the final rank in the game with Code School. <laughs> Huge thank you to Jaden for doing this with me. I had a total blast. Thank you for watching. Thanks again for Holzkern for sponsoring today's video. Click the link in the description to check them out and get 15% off plus a free wooden postcard.